Dayton, a lot of talk early on in camp from Whit Merrifield and, and really everyone is, you know, there, there's, a, the, there's a standard of winning heading into this season. The expectation from the fan base should be hold us to a standard of winning. Have you felt that? Uh, would you echo those sentiments? Yeah, Josh. And I, I mean, I've, I feel honest, I feel that every year. Um, we got so much respect for major league players and what they endure and the discipline it takes to play in the major leagues. And, and um, I think every camp feels that um, they have a strong chance to win. I mean, major league baseball players just believe in themselves as much as any athlete that I've ever been around. Um, but, you know, I think when you look where our players are uh, within their careers, their experience level, they are um, at a point in time where there's a comfort level. There is uh, a belief in, in what they can achieve together. And uh, I can't thank, you know, uh, the support of ownership, John Sherman, uh, and uh, the entire ownership group, our, our front office, our scouts, our development people with, you know, their great input uh, this off season as we were able to, you know, add some some key players that that blend in really really well uh, with, uh, you know, what we uh, had on our roster uh, last year. So uh, you know, we, we feel really good about our team. Uh, Mike Matheny's preparation is is special. This coaching staff doesn't miss a trick. Uh, you know, they're, they're very prepared. And, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, getting camp going and, um, uh, you know, getting, getting everybody ready to go. Any specific names standing out to you, catching your eye early on? Well, everybody looks great right now, Josh. As you know, players are fresh physically. They're fresh mentally. Uh, there's, there's always a positive attitude, you know, this time of year and, you know, most of the guys are executing their pitches in bullpens and live BPs, but, you know, it, it's a lot different, you know, once the games begin, but, uh, you know, we've, most of these players have a pretty good track record. Uh, there's truthfully, um, there's competition in some ways in this camp, but as far as the starting lineup, it's, it's pretty much set. The rotation, you know, it's, it's pretty much set. I mean, there's seven or eight guys that, you know, are competing maybe for, uh, one of the final spots in the rotation, the core group of the bullpen is set. That's a good feeling to have when you enter camp that, um, you know, you, your team is is pretty locked in at certain positions. Um, you know, that, that's a good sign for me. Hey, Dayton, um, how, how tricky is handling the arms? I mean, this, this year coming off last year, how, how – I don't know how, how, how stressful or not is, is no, that? Alec, and, I'm not, I'm not as concerned about it as um, then, then maybe you'd think, I mean, every year you, you try to get through the first 12 days of camp. Bill Fisher always told me if you can get through the 12, first 12 days, two weeks of camp uh, you know, with your pitchers healthy, there's a good chance they're going to stay healthy as you break spring and uh, you know, the first part of the year, but you know, that's something you're always managing. You're always managing the health of your pitchers and your players. I trust Cal Eldred, Nick Kenny, uh, Mike Matheny. I trust our pitchers. I trust our pitchers to communicate um, how they feel. Uh, I trust them to, to, to do their work and prepare in ways that are going to keep them healthy, take care of their bodies, go to bed at night, um, you know, get their sleep, get their rest and, and show up, you know, ready to compete and prepare that's in ways are going to keep them healthy. And, and the other part of that, Alec, is, you know, the players come to camp anymore in great shape. Uh, you know, I remember my first spring training camp in 1997 in, in West Palm and uh, with, with the Braves. You know, it was, it was a different feel. The spring training was a little bit longer. You know, players kind of work themselves into shape. Now these, these guys stay in great shape year-round. And, and most of these players – uh, regardless of COVID. I mean, they, they've been out here in Arizona uh, and working out at, you know, various facilities, you know, expect, you know, uh, respecting the protocols, of course, but, um, you know, they, they just keep themselves in great shape. That's, they, they just, they love to train. With the young guys, the young arms, how, I mean, what's the approach with, with some of those guys? Obviously they're different levels, different ages and stuff, but how, what's the approach with those guys? Well, you know, Mike and I talk about this a lot because obviously there's going to be a gap between the major league season and the minor league season. And so, you know, we'll, we'll try to space it out a little bit. 
um, you know, with, with guys that we know for sure are going to be in minor league camp. I mean, historically, uh, it's been very rare for us ever to invite players to major league camp who realistically don't have a shot to make the major league team. There are exceptions from year to year. Um, but, you know, historically, I was raised in the game where you don't bring a player to major league camp unless he's got a chance to, to win a job. Well, because of, you know, the, the, where we are right now in the industry and the rhythm of the 2020 season, how it's, uh, you know, uh, set up, how it's structured, you know, there's going to be that gap. So we're going to have to, you know, the Ace of Lacy's of the world and, you know, guys like that, you know, we, we probably won't, you know, get them too much game time especially early. We'll just see how it plays out late if there is innings for him. Hey, Dayton, I got a, maybe a couple of questions that aren't specific about this team right now, but um, how long is it going to take to kind of figure out what you lost development in the last year without the minor league season? Have you, is there any way to even try to calculate that? You know, Todd, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've, I've been on the scouting trail a little bit uh, before I got to camp. I've been out seeing players, college players, college workouts, uh, some high school players. Um, I haven't noticed a huge difference. Uh, you know, the, the pitchers, uh, for the most part, have been overthrowing a little bit, um, uh, not commanding their pitches as well. Some of the hitters, you know, look a little rusty. And so I've, I've, I've watched it. I've had a little bit of a sample size at the amateur level, not as much here at the professional level. But as I've said before, I mean, these guys are, you know, major league players are highly skilled. They've worked and spent countless hours on perfecting their skill at a level to make it this far. And so I, I expect them to, you know, pick it up rather quickly. I think the lower levels, Todd, is where you'll, you know, see some of the impact. But I think in this camp, you know, I think guys will, will, will leave camp sharp and, and ready to perform at a high level come April one. Just a like a baseball question, you know. The were you surprised about that about this Fernando Tatis Jr. deal? How long it was for how much money for a guy who they still had so much control over? Is that a, is that a good thing for baseball to have a deal that long for such a young player? You know, Todd, I think that I, I trust what all twenty nine other general managers do for their team, for their club, um, and so I, I don't have a a reaction one way or the other, other, I mean, I've learned through the years that, um, you know, focus on what you do, focus on the things that are pertinent to the uh, Kansas city Royals. Um, AJ Preller knows what he's doing with his team. And Fernando Tatis is a, is a terrific player, a terrific talent. And uh, you want that guy in the lineup every single day uh, that you're blessed to be a part of, of that organization. So um yeah, I, I think it's obviously great for the player, great for the franchise, great for the fans. And, um, you know, that what San Diego does is is their business. Hey, Dayton. Um, I think last year you had talked a little bit about just, um, you know, with all the health protocols and everything, it changed a little bit of um, how you interacted maybe with some of the staff and players. How how, how different was that um, just as we get ready for another season where there's a lot of similar type things in place? I was wondering how different was that for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging for me personally um, because we, we like the relationship. We like to be engaged with our players. We like to be very visible with our players. Um, and, you know, so, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, with the protocols, it's going to allow us to continue to do some of that. Uh, although, you know, we're conscious of social distancing and, and uh, not being in each other's company for too long. Obviously, mask wearing is is crucial for us all. Uh, the main thing is that we keep people healthy, as we all know. But uh, there's other ways to to communicate, and um, you know, like we're doing right now, obviously. So, um, you know, there's there's ways to do it. Still stay engaged. Use your voice a lot more from a distance, and um, you know, I find that to be you know kind of the the rhythm and how we're socializing. Did, did it take a little while that, uh, I mean, like, particularly like, you know, with, the, you know, a guy like Matheny, where, you know, you might have had conversations with him on a regular basis, sit down. So yeah, did it take a little while to get adjust that. Yeah, but Mike and I have been, we've been having a lot of sit downs. I mean, it's, it's been, you know, one on one in a conference room and uh, probably 15 feet apart wearing masks. So we're, I mean, we're, we're respectful of everything, but you know, we're, we're, we're communicating very well multiple times a day on, on many issues. And um, so, 
you know, we don't, we're not having a lot of the, the face-to-face -face combat or uh, contact in discussions during the workouts, but, um, you know, nonetheless, you know, we're, we're getting uh, everything we need to accomplish. So. And I just wanted to go back. You talked about sort of having a lot of the lineup more set. Um, do the decisions on sort of like rounding out the, the, the bench change at all? I'm thinking in past years you had some, you know, you might have had young guys that were going to get, you know, you would be able to give them time to play at the major league level. Is it more so now we have to balance, you know, is it better for the guy to be maybe at another level playing every day? Could be. He, how's he going to, or is it, you it know? It could be. I mean, it could be. I mean, the one thing I do know, Lynn, if, if we're, we're going to win a world championship, this is going to be the season that we expect. I mean, we're going to need all of our players to, to do well, stay healthy, and, and whether they begin the season in the minor leagues, uh, or, or not. I mean, we're going to need them to come up uh, to Kansas City and help us win a game, stabilize the bullpen, uh, make a spot start. And yes, I mean, some of the young players, it may make more sense for them to begin the year in the minor leagues. So they're getting the necessary reps. I mean, historically, we don't uh, think it's in the best interest of the player or the success of the team to have a young player as a, as a part-time guy uh, or bat off the bench or just an extra pitcher. I mean, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're developing in a way that when they do come up, they're going to be impactful. Mr. Moore, you just touched on it a little bit. Uh, it seems like with the front office moves, you guys may have accelerated, you know, winning the opportunity for these guys to win a little bit. What are your expectations for this team? I mean, not looking for a number of wins, but what would you like to see from this team considering what y'all did in the offseason? Rob, you know, for, for me, it's, it's the same every single year. Um, you know, I, we expect, you know, our players um, to represent the Royals, uh, our community in the game of baseball as well as you can possibly do that. I think that's really, really important uh, to connect with our fans, be a part of our community, uh, commit to the right things, uh, uh, trust and, and respect each other. Um, uh, trust Mike Matheny's uh, direction and his leadership. And, and if you do, if we do that, we're going to win our, our share of baseball games. I mean, when you're, when you're playing every single day over 162 games, as we all know, it's the ones that are consistent on the field, consistent off the field, they commit to a routine, they commit to a process uh, and uh, they, they show up every single day prepared to give their absolute best and if they're able to do that, they're going to reach their ceiling. And so as a general manager, you just simply want your players to reach their ceiling. I think it's impossible to do that unless you are committed in those areas that I discussed. Uh, I think that's, that's what a baseball player must do and how they must represent this game. And that's one of the things we expect here in Kansas City. And so, again, as a general manager, you just want your, your team to reach their ceiling. And, of course, um, and then, and then overachieve a little bit, right? Um, I mean, that's, that's what you're always hoping it happens. I mean, the team that wins the World Series is going to overachieve in some way that they didn't expect. And that's just the nature of our game. Uh, assuming we stay healthy, which we certainly expect we will, um, there's no reason to think otherwise. Uh, and and you, you, players prepare the way I mentioned, uh, we should reach our ceiling. And you know, look, uh, you have two good months and you play 500 the rest of the way, you're probably in the playoffs. If you have one great month and play 500 the rest of the way, you're probably in the playoffs. And so, you know, once you get in, as we all know, uh, a lot of good things can happen, and especially in our environment in Kauffman Stadium with a, a fan base and a community that uh, supports our teams as well as anybody in the country. Dayton, uh, when, when it comes to relievers, you had quite a few last year either break out or, or have a revival of, of sorts. Um, you always talk about throw strikes and be fearless. Yeah. Can, they, can they check that box of fearlessness in that 60-game no-fan season? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Vern. Um, yeah, I think you can. I mean, I think you know, we've got a, enough veteran guys um, that have track record. And, and, and really, I, b I believe that is the absolute key. You, you and I have talked about that before. I, I share that with all of our young scouts. That's, that was information that Dick Tidrow gave me 15 plus years ago. Um, 
you know, it's the makeup of a, of a quality reliever throw strikes and, and fearless, right? And come back and compete and attack. And um, of course, you got to, you know, do a lot of other things, field your position and hold runners and, and um, you know, throw to bases and, and do all those things that you have to do late in the game to win. But I think it's, it's safe to say that those are ingredients that every successful relief pitcher must have. And, uh, but they're always, you know, going in and out. Um, you know, bullpens are historically very unpredictable. Uh, that's why you're going to need a lot of quality arms, um, you know, to, uh, to get through 162 games. And we're going to ask pitchers to possibly, uh, you know, perform in different roles. And, you know, we won't be opposed at some point in time if, if uh, the situation presents itself to, to call up maybe one of our young, talented starters and ask them to, to pitch in the bullpen uh, again at the appropriate time, if indeed it's, it's, it's required. Hey, Dayton, you've been on uh, record as saying that, um, you know, you can't keep everybody, but I'm wondering if you could give us an, uh, an idea of uh, gauging your interest and the interest of the players part in, in the long-term future of uh, Jorge Soler. Well, I mean, that's, that's a great question, Greg. I mean, right now, I mean, we're, we're just really focused on getting ready for the season. Um, as I've said many times that, uh, you know, we want to keep as many of our, our talented players here as long as we, we possibly can. And so we'll always look to do that uh, when the opportunity is right. Uh, there's a there's a rhythm to that. There's a timing to all of those discussions and decisions. And, you know, right now, especially as we begin camp, you know, we're just really focused on getting players ready. And, uh, you know, spring training is a, a joyous time of year. It's a time when we all come together and share the expectations of the upcoming season. Uh, and we want to make sure that, uh, you know, our players are focused simply on on doing just that. Dayton, you've put t- together a team this year that, is going to be at least competitive with the additions you've made and hopefully you win. Maybe you don't, but at least the fans in Kansas city know they've got a team that's trying to win. And as I'm sure, you know, many players around the league are wondering why that's not the case with every team. And I'm thinking back to your days as a a college coach where maybe some of your players might've wanted to come out and watch a ball game. Is it good for the game that there are teams that don't put the competitive effort forth that you guys are doing this year? Well, you know, Bill, again, I mean, focus on just simply on what we do and, and, and not understanding what the other 29 teams do, the, what they're under, what the, you know, what the direction of ownership is, where they think, you know, their opportunity is to win. I mean, I, we don't know any other way. Um, I, I think you've got, you're trying to, ins- you're trying to uh, inspire people to follow your team and you're trying to, uh, inspire young people to be a part of this game and want to play this game. And so I think what we've always tried to do is, is be as competitive as we possibly can. Um, everybody will tell you that whatever our budget is financially, we've um, taken it right to the, the max every single year. We've spent whatever's been given to us. That's on record. Um, you know, I think it's really important uh, to try to win in each each and every year, you know, when, you know, I remember having a conversation with Adam Wainwright many, many years ago, I had the same conversation with Khalil Lee here when we did the Ben Attendee trade. And I said, look, here's the deal. Um, you're going to be a major league player someday. And uh, when you're in that clubhouse, you're going to realize that you're one of 26 guys that has a very small window of opportunity to win a championship. And you're one of 26 guys that has a very small window of opportunity to maximize the financial rewards of this game. And so you're going to want to be a part of an organization and a team and an ownership that's going to do everything they can to put the best team on the field to support those players and the coaching staff and the manager who has to put their professional reputation on the line each and every night and answer questions uh, multiple times a day about what went right and what went wrong. And so I think to be a great steward of the game um, and to continue to grow the game in the ways that we think are the most healthy, you've got to bust your tail um, for the good of the players, the fans and the coaching staff and ownership uh, and everybody surrounding the game, put the best team you can on the field, period. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Hey, everyone, we've got time for two more. So go ahead. Who else? 
Hey, Dave, now it's curious to talk about the fans. Are there going to be fans in the stands as the league announced that? Are they going to announce it? Do you know? I don't know if there's been an announcement, Swanee. I, I know that we've been told Swanee's probably yeah. part of that planning. Um, we've been told to have fans of some percentage. We just don't know the exact numbers as of yet. Yeah, we, we feel good about that, Pete. Um, you know, the Chiefs obviously had fans in the stands. Uh, I think they, they did a terrific job and really kind of helped create the model. And, and um, you know, I know it's really important to John Sherman uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, we have a percentage of Kauffman Stadium utilized uh, in a safe way, uh, along with our health officials and our community. In Kansas City's, I think, you know, I get asked this question a lot. And, um, you know, I think for the most part, people of Kansas City have been pretty disciplined. Um, they've been pretty respectful of one another. Uh, they want to see each other succeed. They want to see restaurant owners uh, profitable. They want to see small business and men and women doing well. And, and, and so for that to happen, uh, you know, we all got to be a little more disciplined and a little more structured in ways that we're not used to. We're getting, we're, we're certainly uh, have adjusted well. And uh, so I think we have a competitive advantage in our community because of, uh, I think people are pretty disciplined and, and for the most part, respect authority. Hey, Annie, I saw you were trying to get in. Why don't you wrap this up? Yeah, Dayton, I, I was just curious about, you know, you, you were able to add a lot of veteran experience this off season to your roster. How important to you is that balance to say, you know, give that veteran experience to the roster while also maintaining the young core that you yeah. have? Yeah, I think it's real important, Annie. Um, you know, you, you want the you want a great you want a nice blend, okay? And you know, we've I'm sure Mike's talked a lot about this. Um, you know, when you look at some of the veteran guys that we have, uh, a lot of them uh, have World Series championship rings, and others have you know pennant rings of winning the the American League or National League pennant. Uh, they have playoff experience, and then so they can share that wisdom. Um, how to handle certain things along the way. They, they know what warning signs to look for in teams and in young players to maybe come alongside of them and give them the, the right encouragement or, or maybe the right um, advice uh, during the appropriate time. And then it's important to have those young guys that have all that, you know, youthful enthusiasm and exuberance and they kind of naive in ways and they think they're bulletproof and they're fearless and, and, uh, you know, that that breathes life into um, the older player as well. And so I think it's really important to have that healthy blend. And at the end of the day, you, you want a group of guys that want to win for one another and um, understand that how important being a major league baseball is, what they represent. And then the most important thing is how they're going to leave this game and make it better for the next generation. And so I think if you have players with that type of mindset, they come out and play with that same innocence when they were a little boy before they even knew what professional baseball was really about. All right, everybody.